Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Today marks a somber anniversary, one year after an inferno in the Porterville Library that took the lives of two firefighters, one of them from Delano. We catch up with his family to see how they're doing and the depart- how the department is honoring the legacy of these heroes. New developments in the ongoing struggle to get kids back into the classroom as Kern High School District trustees vote to begin the process of reopening schools. And today, perseverance pays off. After a 293 million mile journey, NASA's Mars rover will land on the red planet in just a matter of hours. We'll tell you how you can watch on this Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Good morning, everyone. It is 5 a.m. Can't believe that we are just that much closer to the weekend. Uh, But I have to say, Maddie, it's going to be really cool to see this rover land on Mars in just a few hours later this morning into the early afternoon. Uh, It's going to be really neat to see a big deal. Yeah, really exciting, Uh, and we're going to tell you how you can watch it. In fact, we have a special guest in studio today. His name's Kevin Charette. I don't know. uh, It's so weird coming in here and actually seeing someone else in this studio, but that's why he's in here today, because he's going to be talking more about the landing and when it's happening. Well, I'll tell you, I feel like a new employee because I haven't been in front of all this uh, technology uh, for about five, six months. So let's see if I still remember everything. It's like uh, teaching an old dog new tricks. Uh, Let's talk about our forecast because uh, we had the clearing skies yesterday and now we're looking at sunny skies for today. Let's take you to the satellite and radar, show you what's going on right now and nothing. Remember yesterday we had some clouds around the area. Those parted ways with Kern County and again, plenty of sunshine today. Uh, Current temperature right now now sitting at 42 degrees. No winds to talk about right now for you. And as we take a look at the hour by hour, you can see those temperatures will rise again uh, into the 60s by 3 o'clock, 67 degrees. For the mountains, uh, we've got, well, for some reason, the camera went dark out of Tehachapi. 32 degrees there, though. And east southeast wind at 8 miles per hour. Visibility is good. You've got clear skies as well. And uh, we've got a little bit of a breeze if you're headed over the Great Line. So keep that in mind this morning. There's no advisories in place or anything like that. And then you can see the temperature starting out in those 30s and then will be right near 50 as we head into this afternoon. I'll have much more in your forecast coming up in just a little bit. For now, back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Breaking overnight, 38 Kern County firefighters spent several hours knocking down a massive blaze at a former tire shop in Lamont. Take a look at this. According to the Kern County Fire Department, the fire started just after midnight on the corner of Wharton Avenue and Main Street. Due to the high heat and intensity of the blaze, Nearly 40 members of the fire department were called out to battle this fire, including two ladder trucks and three battalion chiefs. Once firefighters arrived, they were concerned the flames would spread to nearby businesses, which still had employees inside. We were able to go defensive on this fire from from the onset uh, due to the uh, heavy fire involvement and the exposures. We were able to safely evacuate uh, employees from the packing shed. There were no injuries to report. Uh, We do have a a department safety officer on scene overseeing operations to help keep our firefighters uh, safe and the public at this time. Arson investigators are working to determine what caused the fire. From our 17 News follow-up file this morning, there are now three billboards in Bakersfield aimed at finding two missing California City boys. It's been 59 days since three-year-old Orson and four-year-old Orrin West were reported missing. A few people are bringing the investigation to the streets of Bakersfield, including Jennifer Nobles, who has no connection to the boys but wanted to help. A couple of days ago, she used her own money to put up two billboards in Bakersfield. I just, I guess I just can't stop thinking about it, thinking of a three and a four, you know, year old child. Out of nowhere, just poof, they're gone. And that you never see, never see them again, and it's going on two months. I mean, I, I just, I can't, I can't grasp that, that reality of it. And so it's just got me, I'm so... I watch something on it every day. The billboards are located along Mohawk Street near Rosedale Highway. They both went up Tuesday and will stay up for the next four weeks. The biological family of the boys raised money for two other billboards, also in Bakersfield. New information last night on the arrest of former 34th Assembly District candidate Julie Solis. You may remember Solis posted this video on social media when she went to the office of Congressman Kevin McCarthy and demanded he resign. According to a court filing, Solis became upset when told the office was closed and McCarthy was not there. She also claimed the door was unlocked, but police say Solis followed a mail carrier who was let inside the office. 
When Solis refused to leave, she was arrested and charged with trespassing. Solis is scheduled to be formally arraigned next week. Three-way Chevrolet and the Bakersfield Homeless Center are teaming up to tackle hunger. The dealership donated $1,000 and a pallet of food to the center. Well, we're incredibly grateful anytime uh, a company like Three-Way Chevrolet wants to stand with us to serve those people that are in crisis. Tackle Hunger is a grassroots network that helps support local food charities. During the month of January, three-way Chevrolet collected non-perishable food items and monetary donations for the homeless center in its showroom, and the dealership matched those donations. Looking ahead to next month, the local group Leaders in Life is hosting a virtual youth leadership conference. Local teens have been planning the youth conference each year for more than two decades. It offers a positive environment to talk about issues such as youth leadership, college and career information, relationships, self-esteem, stress management, and diversity. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, the conference will be held on the Canvas virtual platform. It's happening March 11th from 9 a.m. to 2.15 p.m. Students who are interested will have to register through their school. The city of Bakersfield is hosting another pop-up bulky item drop-off event this weekend. They're both happening Saturday from 8 a.m. till noon in the parking lots of Aero Park on Joetta Avenue and Mechanics Bank Arena on Truxton Avenue. You can drop off items that will not fit in your trash can or in your blue recyclable recycle bin. You're asked to separate your trash from your recyclable items before entering the drive through The city says hazardous waste, construction, or demolition materials will not be accepted. There's one more chance this week to get your child caught up on immunizations. Adventist Health Bakersfield holding a free immunization clinic today at Lamont Elementary School District office. It's located at 7915 Burgundy Avenue. The clinic is happening from 9.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. Don't forget to bring your child's immunization card with you. It's free for anyone 18 and younger, but call ahead for any child you bring who's older than 5. The number to call is 869 869- 6740. There are still more clinics happening throughout the month, and you can find a list of dates and locations on our website, kget.com. Welcome back. Today marks one year since the tragic library fire that took the lives of two civil ser- servants in Tulare County. One of them, a fire captain with roots in Delano. 17's Ileana Capillan is live in Porterville this morning at what now remains of that once beloved community center. Ileana? Maddie, one year after the fire, and what once stood here was a library, but now looks very different than it once did. However, the memory of the flame still burns on in the memories of the community. Live live to to leave legacy, legacy, die die to to fulfill fulfill destiny. destiny. Those are the words Captain Ray Figueroa's father remembers his son living by. A year later, the family and community still mourning the loss of two firefighters from Station 71 in Porterville. Their memory not being forgotten, that we hope that that will prevent from another incident like that happening and other families having to go through what we're going through. Figueroa himself is a retired police chief. He knows the meaning of putting your life on the line. I was aware of all the dangers behind it, so every day I would say, you know, I hope you, you know you need to be careful and to prepare myself. But you're never going to be 100% prepared to when if it finally does. Um, affect you. This year, due to the pandemic, an anniversary memorial will be posted on the Porterville Fire Department's Facebook page today at 4. The families of Captain Figueroa and Firefighter Patrick Jones will be presented with the California State Firefighters Association Purple Heart Medals and certificates. The Porterville Fire Department has also established traditions to honor their fallen brothers on this anniversary. Captain uh, Ray Figueroa had an affinity for axes and uh, I actually, when the axe I carry in my truck is a gift from Ray. So um, the tradition that we have with the axes is based on Ray's affinity for axes. And uh, so during that day, uh, everybody will be maintenancing our axes in the, in the department. The fire department will also be holding a moment of silence on their dispatch channel at 4.16 p.m. This is to recognize the mayday call that came in for the library fire and that you have a brotherhood and sisterhood that takes place within it. When one of us fall, it affects everybody across the board. Okay, we have a uh, heavy smoke coming out of the front of the library. The Figueroa family hopes to host a normal memorial once the pandemic has passed. In Porterville, Ileana Capellan, 17 News. All right, thank you so much, Ileana. 
Meantime, in national news, some 2 million Texans are or more are still without power. Two days after an Arctic blast hit the state, the unusually heavy snowfall and single digit temperatures created unprecedented demand on as the uh, on the system as people tried to stay warm. And ERCOT, which operates the state's power grid, had to initiate outages to try and balance the supply with demand. While cries of frustration have been growing across the state, ERCOT officials warned that a total system failure would cause a blackout, which could take months before Texans got power back on. Yesterday, millions in the state were placed under a boil water notice due to damaged infrastructure and frozen pipes. And we're back here at 520 making headlines around the country. NASA's Perseverance rover will aim to stick the landing on Mars, kicking off a new era in red planet exploration today. According to NASA, the Mars rover Perseverance has almost completed the 293 million mile journey to its new home, the red planet. In July last year, a United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket launched Perseverance and it should touch down on Mars this afternoon to begin its mission of exploring the Martian surface and seeking evidence of ancient life on Mars. NASA TV will live stream the landing and the NASA Visitor Complex will stream coverage on a large video screen starting at 11.15 a.m. Pretty cool. Can't wait to watch. The House Financial Services Committee will hold a hearing on recent stock market volatility involving GameStop. The hearing will be held virtually starting at 9 this morning. Among those called to testify are Vladimir Tenev, CEO of online trading firm Robinhood Markets, Inc., and Steve Huffman, CEO and co-founder of social media community and online forum site Reddit. Caught on camera yesterday, a wallaby entering and wandering through the corridors of a hospital in Australia was caught on camera. Take a look at this. This was all caught on CCTV cameras in Hamilton. The wallaby hopped through the automatic doors of the hospital, bounced past at least one medical worker, and peered through windows before exiting the building. The animal made it safely back to the wild just after a few minutes in the hospital. It's pretty funny. Your time now is 522, and the Biden White House is aiming to pass additional funding for the COVID pandemic before passing the $1.9 trillion relief package. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. In your 17 Business Watch, skilled trades boomed over the last year. That's according to a new analysis from PeopleReady. The staffing firm found job postings for drywall finishers up 300% since last month. Title and stone setters up nearly 80%. Boiler makers. Cement masons, construction and maintenance painters, also postings up more than 50% last month. With construction season just around the corner, people ready are expects to see an even higher demand for tradespeople in the workforce. Legendary Basketball Hall of Famer Shaquille O'Neal is teaming up with Tony the Tiger. For the first time in Kellogg's Frosted Flakes history, Tony is stepping aside and letting Shaq take over the front of the box of this one-of-a-kind collaboration. Kellogg's Frosted Flakes with Crispy Cinnamon Basketballs. It is the classic Frosted Flakes that you know, mixed with crispy mini cinnamon dusted basketballs. The cereal will, help sh will hit shelves nationwide in April for a limited time. This new cereal helps the dynamic duo continue their commitment to Mission Tiger to help 1 million kids gain better access to sports by the end of this year. College hopefuls are wrapping up their applications and starting to hear back if they applied early. But the COVID-19 pandemic is changing the college admissions landscape, making some schools harder to get into. Liz McLaughlin has more. I started working on my main college essay in August of 2020. Cameron Grant, a New Jersey high school senior, is finally finished with all of her college applications. I applied to 24 schools. She's only seen a couple of those campuses in person, navigating virtual sessions and video interviews for her applications. Hi, Brown. Many of which were for top tier schools, ones likely to be even more selective this year. So what you're gonna have as a COVID effect is it's gonna be harder to get into a Harvard this year than it's probably been in 20 years. In fact, Harvard saw a 57% increase in early applications. Yale had 38% more, a record high for both schools. The big chunk of students are coming in from last year's gap year class, so there's almost fewer spots for this year's class. At Penn, the number of students that opted for a gap year last fall jumped 300 percent. With fewer spots available and many schools going test optional due to the pandemic, 
More students are applying to more schools, which could result in fewer acceptances to go around. A school is not going to be accepting multiple, multiple students from that same high school in most cases. So far, Cameron Grant hasn't gotten any denial letters. It's crazy. Lending to her positive attitude. Rejection is redirection. And like many students, hopes wherever she decides to go this fall will be back to a normal college experience. Liz McLaughlin, NBC News. President Biden stuck in Washington. His trip to Michigan to a Michigan vaccine plant today is being rescheduled due to bad weather. The same storms that delayed COVID vaccine shipments. Tracy Potts has that story, plus new spending to fight the virus. Maddie, good morning. Good morning, everyone. The Biden administration still pushing this big $1.9 trillion COVID relief package. But while they're waiting for Congress to act, planning to spend some money on hand to increase testing for schools and communities that in some areas have been overlooked. The White House plans to spend $1.6 billion on more COVID tests and supplies while waiting for Congress to approve massive relief. Federal government has to chip in, make sure we get this done. Storms affecting 30 states are delaying vaccine shipments. We're going to run out. Today, tomorrow, we're going to run out of what we have now. The U.S. is now vaccinating 1.7 million people every day. But the CDC warns cases are dropping because we're coming off the holiday surge, not because more people are getting shots, and that new strains of coronavirus could push those numbers back up. The continued spread of variants that are more transmissible could je jeopardize the progress we have made in the last month if, our, if we let our guard down. Instead of spring, the Biden administration now says due to production delays, it'll be July before the vaccine is available to every American. Next month marks one year since the country shut down. The CDC predicts 559,000 deaths by then. The White House still planning how the president will observe that anniversary with speech or perhaps an event. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Nexstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.